Masteron, another classic anabolic steroids, decades old, used back in the 1970s medically initially for women with breast cancer. Now very popular as a staple anabolic steroid, as a cutting and hardening agent for bodybuilders in the last few weeks before they approach a show. In addition to other steroids that are used, this drug is classically used for its anti-estrogenic properties, for that full hard look. It's thought to be a better, more tolerated drug for cutting versus Winstrol, for an example, for the issues that Winstrol may have on a drying agent that can lead to tears and muscle cramps. This is thought to be a better hardening cutting agent that allow men to stay full and hard and train really strong as they're going into that catabolic stage. Also used as an agent additionally with other steroids for men and women that just use steroids generally for personal use for reasons to improve their physique, lean muscle, stay fit, crossfit and powerlifting, both on the professional and the amateur levels, as it is a moderately strong anabolic steroid, theoretically with weak androgenic properties. The history of Masteron, first described in 1959 by Syntex. This is the pharmaceutical giant that brought us Anadrol and Superdrol. Entered the United States market by the FDA in the 1970s as a collaborative effort between Syntex and Lilly Pharmaceuticals. The FDA approved this agent, Masteron, for advanced inoperable breast cancer in women. Now, it's very interesting that the package insert for physicians advised the physicians that Masteron was better tolerated by women versus testosterone because it was theoretically less virilizing with secondary male sex characteristics. I bring a point up here that it's amazing that 50 years ago, the experts, medical experts in the world considered quality of life. They were treating women with breast cancer and they knew that anabolic steroids had properties to protect women, and we'll discuss that, on the breast cancer. And they also brought to mind quality of life for these women. I just wonder today where that's all gone in face of the attack on anabolic steroids, not for the scientific side, but for the political side. Interesting that it was limited in medical use as other steroids were marketed more broadly across the board, like Anadrol, for an example, for cachectic states secondary to medical disease, pre and post-surgical agents, osteoporosis, and of course, anemia, this agent is only marketed for advanced inoperable breast cancer. That is amazing to me, the scope and limitation on this, and we will see why. Due to other more improved therapies for women in breast cancer, Masteron was discontinued in the 1980s in America and then subsequently in the 1990s in Belgium. Now, this drug is still one of the most popular drugs, generically of course, produced throughout the world in very high demand. It comes in a propanate and an enanthate form. The chemical structure of Masteron is DHT derived. The base structure is drostenolone. Drostenolone is a derivative of DHT with the addition of a methyl group at the carbon atom number two making this agent more anabolic as it's increased its resistance to an enzyme called 3-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase, which is an enzyme 
that's in muscle tissue that will break down agents like this, anabolic steroids. Therefore, setting it up that the threshold is lifted and it's more anabolic. With the addition of a carboxylic acid ester, this increases the half-life of this versus a DHT straight derivative, and it's absorbed slower into the circulation. The half-life of Masteron is approximately two days after the injection. And this is similar to other propanoic acid like steroid esters like testosterone propanate. Also comes in an anthate form that obviously is going to have a longer half life. The estrogenic properties of this drug are the highlight of this video as it is a non aromatizable DHT derived anabolic steroid, it acts as an anti estrogen. What are the mechanisms of action? This is absolutely, incredibly scientifically and clinically how it works. Number one, it works like a CIRM, Selective Estrogen Receptor Modulator, like tamoxifen. Remember, it was cleared by the FDA to be an anti-estrogen, and it was used alongside of tamoxifen 50 years ago, and that's how it works. It's blocking directly onto where estrogen affects in modulation on the tissues. For an example, a breast cancer itself, there's receptors for estrogen, receptor positive breast cancer, and it's blocking it directly on that actual site. Number two, which is controversial, but I think it's true. It works directly on the aromatase enzyme is a competitive inhibitor leading to the reduction of systemic estrogen overall just like an aromatase inhibitor like anastrozole will do this is incredible there is the two theory that i apply directly on the aromatase enzyme and indirectly as a selective estrogen receptor modulator and this is why you will see the theory of Masteron being used as an anti-estrogen with other estrogenic steroids like testosterone and dianabol and equipoise. The limitation of this from the anecdotal experiences I've had is that it will work as an anti-estrogen. People tell me, these men tell me, but there's a limit to it. The limit is based on the amount of aromatizable steroids that are used, the duration, the genes of the man, other medical aspects, and of course, the cycle length. Now, estrogenic side effects and using Masteron as a TRT add-on, it does work, there's no question. It will reduce symptoms of gynecomastia. It will reduce systemic edema. It definitely initially has increased positive effects on the central nervous system, that's mood and sex, and men can feel better on it. In the end, the problem is that it's fleeting and secondary to downregulation, these effects are lost. And that's why men have to go on and off this drug and it's not sustained. The amazing feature is that its effects directly on sex hormone binding globulin are that it will reduce SHBG and therefore liberate free testosterone apart from the anti-estrogenic effects and if you can imagine you do that to a man that's on testosterone he has an increased free testosterone and that's why his central nervous system will feel these effects mostly well of course if a man has mood disorder depression or some mania that can worsen as well. The androgenic effects of this drug, as it's classified as a low androgenic side effect agent, it will lead to male pattern balding, acne, and of course this is gonna be based on the amount you're using, the duration, your genetics, and so on and so forth. Definitely, as I mentioned previously, it affects the central nervous system with mood and sex. And on the prostate, very interesting. 
The prostate is affected by testosterone and DHT more so directly. The prostate will enlarge as a man gets older, and that's called BPH, and that can be very annoying. It's a nuisance for men. And then we have to consider prostate cancer. We know the data now shows that testosterone replacement itself will not cause prostate cancer, but if a man has existing prostate cancer, there's no question that giving any androgen can further grow that and worsen that. It is interesting at this point of the discussion, I have to bring into play, that prostate disease and BPH all the way through prostate cancer, you have to understand their estrogenic effects and receptors. So this is an anti-estrogenic drug. If it's utilized alongside with steroids and testosterone itself with TRT, could it have beneficial effects on a man's prostate over his life? These are questions that I will be working on and we have to see comments. Please comment on this. We need physicians. We need more experts in the world to understand this and work on this because if we could use these agents to help make men feel better in the world and to help reduce suffering and improve quality of life, that's why I'm here. That's the goal. Now, when we're discussing androgenic effects, we have to look at the suppressive effects, anabolic steroid-induced hypogonadal effects. This drug, although again is marketed and thought to be less suppressive, it can be very suppressive, and men come off it with or without PCT, won't feel well. And depending on their history and other steroid use, it could be a prolonged period of low testosterone or even a permanent period of low testosterone requiring androgen therapy for life. And this is goes along with all other steroids. Every other steroid in the world can have anabolic steroid induced hypogonadal effects. And this is why I give warning. If this scares you and you have not done steroids or a limited amount of steroids, be careful. Don't use steroids because this, in my opinion, is the most common and most crucial side effect to understand when using steroids, that if you use steroids, you may lead to using more steroids, and at a certain point, you're gonna be on steroids, which is testosterone for life. And that may not be the end of the world, and you can still live a long and positive life, but so many men tell me that they never would have done steroids because now they're young, sometimes in their early 20s, and they're suppressed and they need to live on testosterone esters for life. This is very serious consideration. Other side effects with Masteron and why it is limited for prolonged use, in my opinion. It's not liver toxic. Cardiovascular disease aspects. It definitely will be directly and indirectly adverse to lipids where it will lower HDL and potentially increase a man's LDL, obviously depending on so many other variables, his diet, his genes, family history of early coronary disease. Hypertension is interesting. Some men don't get hypertension because it doesn't lead to edema, certainly depending on the dose they use, other steroids. But there can be men that get hypertensive because this is an anabolic steroid. There are receptors in the medial wall of the smooth muscle around the arteries that control blood pressure. And if you get an overall vasoconstrictive effect, that increases blood pressure. I've seen it. Again, there's so many genes for this and there's such an interplay and so many multiple factors going on. LVH, we definitely see data that men that use steroids long enough will enlarge the heart. That's the left ventricle. That's not good because in the end of the day, if you live long enough, your heart can enlarge just naturally because you're living long enough, not to mention hypertension and coronary artery disease. So you want to be very, very careful with this drug. Arrhythmogenic aspects of this drug I have to bring into account. I've seen anecdotal stories, anecdotal aspects of this drug from men that have told me that they use this drug more so than other drugs, of course, with base of testosterone, and they've popped into SVT, which is known as atrial fibrillation, or more dangerous arrhythmias of the ventricle type, 
which is known as ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation. This is very, very dangerous. Now, by no means am I saying that anabolic steroids cause arrhythmias, but there's no question that in a multifactorial aspected manner that if you're using steroids on top of whatever genes you have with other drugs, not to mention that you could certainly pop into an arrhythmia. Hope it's not a dangerous arrhythmia. SVT is certainly not a great rhythm that anyone wants to have from palpitations to AFib. And that has to be dealt with with cardiologists and anticoagulation medicines, and it's very complicated. So I would like people to be aware of this, that this drug definitely affects every cell in the body that has receptors, obviously for anabolic and androgenic receptors, and the heart definitely does. Other side effects that are relevant for this talk with Mastron is polycythemia definitely can occur with this by itself, not to mention it's used additionally with other androgens, most commonly testosterone. Androgen-induced erythrocytosis that I talk about all the time can happen with this, and that is where you have a susceptible man that has genes or sleep apnea and can lead to increase in red cells. Now, I have so many men that I take care of just on testosterone for regular testosterone therapy, and this issue itself becomes so important to us and such a limitation that even a little testosterone for some men leads their red cells up so high that it's potentially very dangerous uh, for clots and DVTs, pulmonary embolisms, potential heart attacks and strokes, that we have to either stop the testosterone or use other agents and phlebotomize, and I have to work with hematologists. It's very complicated. So again, androgen-induced erythrocytosis with Masteron is definitely gonna be something that you're gonna have to watch out for. Mood, as I mentioned before, this affects your hormonal system with estrogen, with free testosterone. It's so complicated. Men can feel great, but then men can get depressed and anxious and anxiety. And as I mentioned before, there is an interplay of anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism that has to be considered, and that's for life. So with conclusion of this, Masteron is an incredibly powerful classic steroid that's been around for decades and is not going anywhere. It's got amazing properties that I've presented today, and I want everyone to watch this video to spread this video with physicians and caregivers and their doctor because it's so complicated and there's so much going on. We need to understand much more of this. And if you're a man or a woman and you're concerned for any of these side effects from hair loss to your heart to your sex, don't do these drugs. Don't even start these drugs because it certainly, in so many circumstances, will lead to more drugs and more drugs. And although it's not heroin and alcohol, it can lead to withdrawal symptoms, and you, if you're a man, being on testosterone for the rest of your life. I really hope this helps everyone. Thank you, everyone, so much for supporting me. Thank you.